On Seven's Gold Coast News, a sudden storm knocks out power to homes and businesses as the city bakes in a summer scorcher. The first day of school for thousands, including five sets of twins at Olmo. Property predictions, the Gold Coast outperforming Brisbane. Development plans decided, the future of the Arundel Hills golf course revealed. And who does this belong to? The luxurious super yacht that's turning heads in Southport. Live from the Gold Coast, 7 News with Amanda Abate and Steve Titmus. Good evening. Thousands of people have suffered through the afternoon heat without air conditioning after a sudden but powerful storm knocked out electricity. As parts of the Gold Coast sweltered through the peak of a heat wave, wild weather returned to parts of the city, still reeling from the Christmas and New Year's Eve disasters. As dark clouds rolled in, the power to homes in Coomera and Pimpama is knocked out before intense rainfall. In Runaway Bay, memories of day after day without power from Christmas are still raw. So when the lights went off in a heat wave, tempers flared. 40 degrees, no power, no reasoning why. Obviously the grid's overloaded. Gary Clean managed to restore his own supply with a generator. But most of the 1,100 homes and businesses across multiple suburbs sweltered in the heat. Energex says it was a problem with a transformer. It's a shocker. The boys are looking to go down onto the boats, turn the genset on, run the aircons on there and work from there for the rest of the hour. We had been warned of the impending heat, but it was still a shock to many. After a hot and humid night, the arrival of the sun turned uncomfortable conditions into something far more fierce. Roadwork crews sweltered in Hope Island. Just keeping the fluids up, plenty of hydrolite, trying to keep in the shade where we can, start early, finish early. While in Labrador, workers continued to labour away, clearing debris from the Christmas Day storm. It's hard, hot work. A haze of humidity consumed the hinterland this afternoon as temperatures across the city climbed. A top of 34 degrees in Helensvale, 38.6 in Canungra, 31.5 in Burley. Hundreds who sought refuge by the beach were greeted with a hot northerly wind on the scorching sand. It's way too hot, I can't even like leave. Queensland's too hot. For the beachgoers heading to the ocean to cool off, there was no reprieve, with the water temperature sitting at a very warm 27 degrees. The heat wave sparking urgent health warnings for vulnerable residents. Calls to Queensland Ambulance jumped 20% as they responded to an increase in heat-related incidents. We encourage them to stay well hydrated, uh, stay in air conditioning if possible, and uh, if they do uh, run into problems, to seek assistance very early so we can treat them. And tonight the power is back on for those 2,000 residents in Coomera, in Coomera sorry, and Pimpama. But more than 300 are still in the dark at Tambourine with power lines down. While a transformer is to blame for those without power at Runaway Bay. Energex says they have teams on the ground scrambling to restore electricity. They're hoping to have the power connected back this evening around 7.30pm just in time for dinner. There, live to Liz Cantor now for more on this seat. Liz, it was a stinker. When can we expect some relief? Steve, it really was like walking around in an oven at times. The apparent temperature neared 40 degrees and most suburbs reached a top of 30. From sunrise, the mercury shot up. In Coolangatta, it was nudging 28 by 7 a.m. Just an hour later at the Seaway, when most were commuting to work or school, it was 31 degrees with a feels-like temperature of 35. Then around 2 p.m., a wind change. Southeasterlies arrived and temperatures fell 3 to 5 degrees within 30 minutes. The arrival of cooler air also resulted in thunderstorms around the hinterland, with heavy rainfall over Springbrook once again. This evening, there are no storm warnings in place and tomorrow a return to normal temperatures. OK, thanks. That Liz Cantor there. Let's now bring in Sally Pearson, who's at Carrara of the Big Bash Finals tonight. And Sally, how will the heat, well, how will they handle the heat? <laughs> well, Steve, it will be a tough test for the men in teal, but it has cooled down to about the mid-20s. The players probably didn't need her, but they spent the afternoon warming up as they looked to scorch the Adelaide Strikers. 
The city is getting behind the action. This is the second BBL game held at Heritage Bank Stadium in less than a week and thousands are expected tonight to cheer them on. The winner faces the Sixers at the SCG on Wednesday night. It is a must-win match for the Heat who are ready to bring the Heat. I'll have more details coming up soon in sport. Thanks, we'll see you then, Sal. While we're suffering through this heat, there's a threat of heavy rain due to a potential cyclone developing in the state's north. Tony Auden, how much rain could be coming to the coast and when? Oh, Amanda, while the tropics are focusing on the potential cyclone landfall in coming days, there could be a sting in the tail for the coast. Now, we're expecting the low to be named Cyclone Kiralee tomorrow, then likely make landfall up on the Herbert and Burdekin coast around Thursday, probably Thursday afternoon as a Category 3 system. Then it should move inland and start dragging the rain with it. All of that moisture should link up with the front and eventually bring some rain to the coast, possibly from Saturday, but more likely from Sunday onwards. Now, it is too early to assess any potential flooding risk, but for now, Steve, most models are moving that heavy rain on within one to two days. Yes, certainly incredible weather. Thank you for that, Tony Auden there. Well, the holidays are over and the new school year has begun for thousands across the Gold Coast. There were many nervous students today, but spare a thought for the teachers at Almost State School who welcomed five sets of twins into prep. Lined up, running headfirst into their next phase of life. <laughs> No, you're not seeing double. Meet Almost Eight School's newest students. Not one, two, three or four, but five sets of twins. It is pretty insane to have five sets of twins. All starting prep, which already proved a little confusing for James and Jason. Where's James? Good luck to their teachers telling them apart. The education minister tried. Di Farmer paid them a visit. But soon turned storyteller. It's got a magic hat. And classmate. I am a learner. There is nothing more important than sending your child to school. Thousands did just that across the city. Marking the end of holidays and the beginning of a break for parents. Are you excited? I'm excited. How's the school holidays been? Very noisy. But for dozens of schools damaged by storms, the holidays were consumed by Operation Cleanup. There is still some work happening with cleanups, but all of those areas have been cordoned off so that the children can um, still go about their business. For Lincoln Craig, it's anything but. His family's roof was ripped off during the storms. Today was his first day of high school at Pacific Pines. I'm most excited about playing with my friends. Made possible by the community, pitching in to buy him uniforms and even a laptop. We wouldn't have been able to, to afford it in, in, in any way, shape, form, fashion or form at the moment. The generosity of other people has kept us afloat. Today also marks the start of phone bans across all state schools. Students won't be allowed to have their mobiles out during school hours and must have notifications switched off on their smart watches. Maybe some of the young people won't like it very much, um, but we think it's a good policy. To keep the kids' eyes... Ready, go. One, two, three. On the prize. Jordan Quinn, 7 Gold Coast News. While the holidays are over, storm-ravaged tourism businesses are about to see a boost. All 50,000 $50 vouchers funded by the state government have been snapped up. The GC Summer Fund site proved very popular with 3 million page views over six days. The vouchers are valid until the end of March and can be used for Gold Coast day tours and attractions. The Gold Coast is emerging as the star in the southeast property market, with our city outpacing Brisbane for property growth in the past financial year. A new report has revealed we have the most expensive regional real estate in the country. No longer a cheap alternative to living in Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane, property prices on the Gold Coast are comparable and climbing faster than any regional city in the country. You can't blame people for wanting to, to move here and we, we can't shut the gates. A growth period unlike any local real estate professionals have seen before. The city's demand outstripping supply, pushing home values in one direction only. Apartments townhouses or freestanding houses, they're all seeing a high level of demand. In June 2020, the average price for a house on the Gold Coast was $670,000. 
By June 2026, it's tipped to hit almost 1.2 million. A new report from Oxford Economics expects prices to rise 5.5% in the next three years. What's really happened is there's been this big dump of money on the Gold Coast that's now circulating. Plenty of it will be spent at the Royal Pines Resort on Sunday at Australia's largest property auction showcase. We've got the people here. We know they're interested in the Gold Coast. Why not make it easy for them by giving them a good selection of property? Almost 130 properties will go under the hammer. Liam Bland, 7 Gold Coast News. A controversial plan for a housing estate in Arundel Hills. Coming up exclusive, the shock twist in the golf club redevelopment fight. Why a makeover of Marinus Cove has sparked a legal war. And a $120 million super... On 7 News, families joining forces to cut grocery bills. We can save sort of anywhere between 10 and 30%. Boosting buying power to save thousands. The new budget saving trend taking off. Seven News, Queensland's number one. New research from Surf Lifesavers has shown the risk of drowning increases significantly during school holidays, rising by 150%. 33 lives have been lost on Australian beaches over the recent break, compared with 26 the year before. We're mainly seeing people go out in, in groups and in, particularly in family groups. Um, too often uh, we see uh, someone go in to rescue someone who's in distress and tragically drown themselves. There are still plenty of holiday makers on the Gold Coast with New South Wales and Victorian schools on leave for another week. Gold Coast Council has rejected plans for a multi-million dollar residential estate at the Arundel Hills Golf Course. It's a win for the community who have been fighting it all the way. All smiles, and why wouldn't they be? Yeah, 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 good stuff. Arundel residents celebrating a significant win in a campaign to protect their suburb. We were positive the whole way through that um, we'd hoped that we'd get the right answer, but we got the right answer with the cherry on the top today. A push to rezone the site of the former Arundel Hills Country Club copped hefty criticism from city officers, concerns echoed by Council's Planning and Environment Committee. The nine-page recommendation of refusal is one of the longest and strongest officer recommendations of refusal I've seen. Plans to turn the green space into a housing estate slammed as catastrophic for the area's flora, fauna and the lifestyles of locals. In attempting to address the housing shortage, what we must not do is sacrifice that which makes the Gold Coast lifestyle so envi enviable because it's actually our lifestyle that underpins our prosperity. Refused unanimously, a firm stand from city leaders, prompting applause in the public gallery. The applicant has indicated publicly they will appeal any refusal. The position of refusal will be defended by the city with all resources available to it. The decision will go before full council on Thursday. Liam Bland, 7 Gold Coast News. The $480 million makeover of Mariners Cove has hit a hurdle with a rival developer launching a legal battle. Council gave the green light for a five-star Ritz-Carlton development last year to revamp one of the Spit's oldest sites. But Gordon Corp has lodged an appeal over the impact on neighbouring residential precincts. A hearing in the Planning and Environment Court is scheduled for next month. A super yacht with an intriguing history has arrived on the Gold Coast. Jordan Quinn, it was built for someone, well, very famous. It certainly was, Steve. You can see Venus right there behind me. It was actually designed for Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. And this morning, the super yacht found its way sailing through our seaway under escort. It's 79 metres long. It easily dwarfed every other vessel in the busy waterway. And while the boat was built for the creator of the iPhone, he sadly died a year before it was unveiled. It's now understood to be owned by his widow, Laureen. The $120 million vessel is the biggest to tie up here at the new super yacht terminal here in Southport. Venus caters to just 12 guests, but has a crew of twice that number. Amanda. Wow, very impressive. Jordan Quinn there. Sports next with Sally Pearson, who's live at Carrara for the Big Bash Finals. And Sally, it's a must win for the Heat tonight. Yeah, it is at the end for one team tonight. Hello, everyone. Coming up next, we're live to the ground for the final words from the team. 
plus a sweltering morning for the Suns. How are they adapting to life under dimmer? In 7 News, urgent health warnings as the Gold Coast heatwave peaks and the cyclone threat builds up north. Also, the dramatic end to a tense manhunt. Plus, schools in for 2024. And families banding together to beat the cost of living. 7 News at 6. Well, we're less than an hour away from a big bash showdown between the Brisbane Heat and Adelaide Strikers in Carrara. Savannah Burke is on the ground and Savannah, it's cooled down for the clash. It certainly has, Sal. The wind has picked up, but the rain is holding off. And it needs to. Brisbane have to be on fire tonight. Lose and it's season over. Win and they'll book a ticket to Wednesday's final with the Sixers. Plus a shot at redemption. Especially for our hometown heroes in front of their family and friends. Yeah, obviously Friday probably didn't go our way. We didn't play the way we wanted to play. Um, I think, you know, we just stick to our strengths and hopefully get the result we want and, um, yeah, look to hopefully Sydney on, on Wednesday night. Bartlett's, Bartlett's breakout season continues. The TSS Old Boys earned a maiden call-up for the Aussies' upcoming series against the West Indies. But his first priority is to win here tonight, Sal. All the action live and free on the screens of seven. Now, it certainly is, Savannah. Savannah Burke reporting there. Well, there's less than six weeks until the Suns opening round clash with Richmond and Damien Hardwick's only turning up the intensity. The new head coach made no exceptions in this morning's field session, despite battling brutal conditions. I don't think we've had a hotter back-to-back -back couple of sessions um, since I've been at the club in 10 years. He's a super clear coach on, on what he wants around his structure, setups, um, and game plan. So. We're grasping that well as a team and, and we're moving forward with it really, really well. The defender's on the cusp of playing his 150th game. Northcliff Iron Woman Lana Rogers has continued her dream season, taking out the Summer of Surf round at Sydney's Manly Beach. The 27-year-old extended her lead on the ski, edging out Burley Heads rival Brielle Cooper for the title. Too familiar for Lana Rogers. I'm surprising myself week by week with my board paddling. I never really considered myself a very big board paddler, so I'm just going with the flow and I'm loving it. Fellow Northcliffe teammate Joe Collins settled for second in the men's, pipped by Alex Headlands, Cooper Williams in the final leg. And guys, no bat flip for me tonight, but fingers crossed for the heat. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be glued to our TVs tonight. Sally Pearson, thank you. Well, coming up after the break, when politics and sport collide, Cricket Australia under fire over a controversial stand on Australia Day at the Gabba. And an end to the heatwave, but the threat of rain returns to our forecast. I'll have all the details for your weather over the week ahead after the break. Sharon Gardella is back here. She's now with a look at the top stories coming up in the news at six. Steve, urgent health warnings as the southeast heatwave peaks. Tony Alden's expert forecast. Plus, the cyclone threat in the far north intensifies as panic buying begins. Also tonight, the wild end to a manhunt for an armed suspect. Supermarkets under fire again, this time over dumped trolleys. A big day for preppies as school begins and how families are banding together to beat the cost of living. Seven News at six starts next. See you then. Weather time now and Liz, finally some relief from this heat. Yes, Amanda, after five days straight of temperatures above 30 degrees, today we sweltered. Cooma Waters local Sharon Nichols recorded a temperature of 41.8 degrees at 1.40 p.m. today. This was shortly before a cooler southerly change moved through around 2 p.m. Tomorrow, some suburbs such as Yatla will fall in temperature by 10 degrees. Right now here in Main Beach, it's 26 degrees and winds are still fresh from the south-southeast. Earlier today, we saw some storms activity passed through ahead of that wind change. It was a warm night at 3 a.m. 26 was as cool as it got for Burley before a top of 32, 23 to 36 at Narang, a top of 37 for Kanangra and the apparent temperature 
felt more like 40. There's a lot happening in our satellite picture. Cloud is spiralling around a coral sea low, which is likely to be named Cyclone Curly tomorrow. It's expected to reach a severe category three by Thursday. Closer to home in the southeast corner, a cooler day with southerly winds pushing in some cloud and possible coastal showers. So it can't hurt to put a brolly in the school bags, but if we do see anything, it should be light. And water change to our temperatures, most suburbs, a degree or two cooler than average tomorrow. For servers Paradise, 23 to 28 with clouds set in. On Gold Coast waters, south easterlies, 15 to 25 knots, seas building to two metres. And there were some solid waves along the coast today, plenty of options along the beach breaks early. And then after the wind change, the southern points have really turned it on. We have a punchy easterly swell and waves should be around chest to overhead tomorrow. The all-important outlook, the last thing we need is more rain. Unfortunately, it's looking wet for the weekend and we will watch those for closely Amanda and Steve with the weather thank you so much Liz and thanks for your company we'll be back again tomorrow night at 5 30 good night